I would like to share with the House um, an, an event that I attended on the 4th of June, um, which was at the Isha Multicultural Women's Health Centre um, in Mirabuka. And as members will know, I've spoken often in the House about the wonderful work that Isha uh, Multicultural Women's Health Centre does for um, our migrant and refugee uh, women in our community. Um, the event that I attended was the launch of a book called Women Under Blue Skies, um, and I was delighted to actually be asked to um, officially launch the book for the Women's Health Centre um, and also to write the foreword for that book, which I thought was a great honour um, to be asked to do that. And I felt that also as a migrant woman myself that I was able um, to contribute uh, my thoughts to the importance of these sorts of publications. Um, the book Women Under Blue Skies... Uh, was funded by a, a grant from the federal government um, in relation uh, to uh, from the Department of Social Services through the Diversity and Social Cohesion Program. Um, and the aim of uh, the book, the subtitle to it, is Migrant Women in Australia Developing Connections, Communities and Careers. Um, there are 21 stories um, in the book written by women who attend um, Isha Multicultural Women's Health Centre, um, and they were brought together um, by uh, Violetta Sozoski, who's one of the, the fabulous people who work at Isha. She's been there for 14 years. So it's obviously a, a great place to work when you've got people who have a long history and association with it. So under the guidance of Violetta and with the facilitator, Rosa Speranza, um, 21 women from 15 countries from the five regions of Africa, Asia, Central America, Europe and West Asia came together um, to tell their stories um, about what it's like to, become, to be uh, a migrant um, in Western Australia. And these women have arrived here um, over a period of 50 years. So some of them have been here a long time, some of them more recently arrived. Um, the stories in the book, and I do... Um, wish to table a copy of the book at the, at the conclusion um, of my speech tonight, Mr President, so that members may um, avail themselves of it to have a look and just have a read of some of the stories. And um, All of the stories that these women tell um, have one thing in common in that they certainly do embrace Australia as their home now. They, some of them do return to their countries of origin for visits. Some of them are unable to do that. Um, but there are just a couple of, um, of the women um, in the book who, particularly when you read their stories, touched me. Uh, Mariana Cusa from Romania, uh, the opening paragraph of her story, the scars on my hands are a reminder of my past. They're a reminder of the brutal torture I faced when I was raped and almost killed as a prisoner in a Romanian jail more than 30 years ago. Something that no woman or man would in this chamber hopefully ever experience. And it's the story of Mariana and how she escapes from that um, and then makes a, a better life for herself in Australia. Um, and her story goes on and she presented on the day uh, the story to the women there. It's the story of Mariam Ashrat from Afghanistan who fled Afghanistan in 1985 uh, with her family to go to India, um, and then it wasn't until 1994, after spending a number of years in India, um, that they were, she was granted a humanitarian refugee status here in Australia, um, and it's the story of her family and how they're now settled and made Australia their home. And it's also the story of Nasim Kamse from Iran, um, and one of the paragraphs in her story um, talks about Australia and her impressions. Mariam uh, Nassim sorry, goes on and, and says that she's still adjusting in some ways because her English is not as good as she would um, like it to be, but she's certainly working on that. But the words here that she says, I think Australia is like a crazy quilt. 
beautiful and precious and created from all immigrants who have moved here to find a better life. I believe we can all make an agreement. No one can claim superiority over another and feel they have more of a right to be called an Australian than anyone else. And I think they're really great words um, to come from someone who claims to not have a great command of the English language, but to be able to write those sentiments and those thoughts in her story, um, I think, um, is, is really quite amazing. On the same event uh, where I launched this book, um, the Isha announced that there is to be somebody uh, to be the first ambassador for Isha, to go out and tell Isha's uh, story uh, in the wider world. Um, and that person, um, who I've met now on a number of occasions and I've come to now call a friend, um, is a woman named Rabia Sadiq. Um, some of you may know Rabia um, from programs that she has appeared on telling her story, um, but Rabia is a criminal and human rights lawyer and a retired British Army officer, although she was born in Perth and educated um, at Penross College uh, with an Indian father um, and an Australian mother, um, but she uh, moved to the UK and became a member of the, the British Defence Forces. Um, Rabia has written a book called Equal Justice, and I would recommend that as reading to anybody in this chamber. The story that she tells, particularly about uh, her time in the army when she uh, had to go into uh, uh, in Basra in Iraq um, and try and negotiate the successful release of two SAS soldiers who were held hostage um, there. Um, that day, when I made my speech launching the book, was about two days after the death of that fabulous African-American poet, Maya Angelou. Um, and I know that a number of people around the chamber are familiar with Maya Angelou's works. But I did just want to, uh, in the time remaining to me tonight, um, share a poem of Maya's which I thought was particularly relevant um, to the migrant women who were, who were there um, at the event that I attended. Um, it's also the story of the struggle of the African-American women, but any people who found themselves um, ever in a struggle. Um, the poem is Still I Rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. They're wonderful words written by Maya Angelou, and I think they resonate for a lot of those women um, who Isha take under their wing, um, who they nurture to become wonderful Australian citizens. Um, and these women are doing a fabulous job there. I commend them for everything they do do for all of those people who have come from backgrounds um, very dissimilar to those that most of us have have been brought up in our lives, um, and I continue to wish Isha very well uh, with all of the work that they do and commend um, this book, uh, Women Under Blue Skies. And with that, I'd like to table a copy of the book, Mr President. Uh, that uh, document is tabled.